Welcome to the first tutorial of this YouTube channel. Today we will be going through how I painted Aomer, Marshall of the Ritter Mark. Down in the description below I've included all the paints that I used for this tutorial. Alright, let's get started. I started by priming this model in black. The first thing we are going to paint will be Aomer's horse. Now, Aomer rides a dark gray horse as seen in the movie with the horse's head and neck area being a slightly lighter gray. So to get this effect, I used the Leho Model Air light gray and I gently, lightly airbrushed the top half of the horse from the neck upwards. A little more of this light gray was applied to the nose and around the face of the horse. Now if you don't have an airbrush, alternatively you can lightly dry brush the head of the horse in Eschen Grey and gradually increase the pressure on your brush when you come up the neck of the horse. The grey increasing in brightness as you go up the body. Once it's done, I applied Nuln Oil to the entire horse. After that we will be painting the skin. Now, on Aomer there is not a lot of flesh areas. Basically, what you see on the face and the neck under the helmet. If you chose the non-helmeted option of Aylmer, you'll have a little bit more face to paint. But essentially, I base coated the flesh areas with Cadian Flesh Tone, followed by a wash of Rakeland Flesh Shade. Once a flesh shade is dried, I mixed a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone with Wraith Bone, which is a very bright bone color, and use that to highlight the, the definition on the face. So this would be the tip of the nose, the bottom of the forehead, and the top of the cheeks. Make sure to highlight the neck as well. To take it a step further, I did a second highlight of Wraith Bone on the most raised areas. The eyes are optional. Uh, personally, I like to paint my eyes with three very simple steps. The first step is to paint the entire eye socket black, followed by dotting uh, the eye white or wraith bone. I prefer wraith bone because it feels like a more organic color. Uh, essentially, you take a single tiny drop of wraith bone or white on the tip of your brush and paint a dot in the socket, but not quite enough to cover the entire black area. Finally, you want to paint the pupil black. In this case, I like to use Games Workshop's Corvus Black. Alternatively, you can use Vallejo Model Colors German Grey, which also is a very dark grey. Almost black, but not quite. I prefer this because, again, it's, it's a more organic and natural looking black. What you want to do is you want to paint a line from the top of the eye to the bottom as the pupil. Painting eyes is not very easy for a lot of people. This may take a few tries. On this Aomer model, for example, it took me two or three tries to get the eyes right. So once eyes is done, um, we move on to the sword. If you're using an airbrush, I, I used uh, Vallejo Air Deep Sky and I base coated the blades with um, this color. So it, that would be the sword or the throwing spear if you decide to equip him with a throwing spear. Alternatively, if you don't have an airbrush or if you don't have this paint, you can use Games Workshop's uh, Cantor Blue. And uh, after a base coat of Cantor Blue, apply some Nuln Oil over it. Uh, that will darken the blue and it will essentially have the same look, similar look and similar effect as um, this airbrush Deep Sky. So after this is done, we are going to paint the sword and the throwing spear non-metallic style. So the thing about non-metallic style is you need to find out where the light is reflecting on the miniature. Before I paint the model, I like to put it under a lamp or shine a light and just to figure out what part of the blade would be the brightest. And in this case, I pick the top of the blade. As you can see, I've added a little bit of that blue I just put on and added it to Eschen Grey and I painted a coat of it just straight down about halfway down the sword. Drag with the side of your brush from the bright point to the center of the sword and then repeat that adding a little bit of white each time and covering a little bit less of a surface area and finally you want to dot the brightest point on the sword pure white. 
and then I did the same thing on the opposite end, on the other side of the sword. Next we're going to base coat some of his armor, so for the chainmail, as we see in the movie, it's a bronze sort of color, so I went with a Mornfang brown base coat. The scale mail will be base coated with Corvus black. When highlighting the scale mail, it is very important to, again, figure out what the bright points on the armor are when reflected under light. So I've picked out the sections of scale mail that are the most raised on the model. So in this case, if you look at Aomer's knee that's raised on the mounted model, you'll end up highlighting each scale, but make sure that the ones closer to the raised areas, you want to highlight them more and use lighter grays and even a little bit of pure white on those areas. Next, the insides of his leather chest and a shoulder armor. So this detailed Rohan armor is essentially leather on top and a metal plate below. So I painted the entirety of the chest armor and the shoulders, the greaves, and the forearms all ash and gray. After that, I gave it a wash of Nuln oil to darken the recesses. And then I started picking out the raised areas with Dawnstone in the crevices. Now you might need a detailed brush for this or just be very uh, careful when you put in the Dawnstone because you still want the majority of the crevice to be a, a dark sort of gray. Don't forget the helmet is also painted this way. Next, after we finish the crevices, you want to paint the overlaid leather on top. So I painted this with Doomful Brown. And again, you have to be careful to only paint the raised areas and not get any of the paint into the uh, crevices. If you do, you just need to go back and fix it a little bit. Now, once it's done, we are going to highlight the leather areas to make it pop more. What I've done here is I've used Mornfang Brown because it kind of gives a little bit of an orange contrast to the reddish armor. And I put a little bit of Mornfang Brown on the side of my brush and basically use the side to edge highlight and draw out all the detailed patterns on the armor. I purposely left out any bottom edges unhighlighted. This makes the armor pop a little bit more and it makes the details stand out a little bit more which I felt was necessary since Aomer's armor is a bit darker. After this highlight is complete, I continued with Scrag Brown followed by Deathclaw Brown. So this is essentially two brighter versions of Mornfang Brown to make my edge highlights pop more. Now if you don't have Scrag Brown and Deathclaw Brown, it's perfectly fine to just add a little bit of white to your Mornfang Brown. Next we're going to paint the chainmail. So once the Mornfang Brown base coat on the chainmail has dried, you want to give it a wash of Nuln Oil. Once the Nuln Oil has dried, you want to start highlighting. So what I did was I used Scrag Brown and only put a little bit on my brush and I dragged the side of the brush up and down the chainmail to pick out the raised areas. If you have too much paint on the brush, it might get into the crevices, which you would have to just uh, go back and fix with the previous steps. Once the Scrag Brown highlight is complete, apply a second highlight of Deathclaw Brown highlight. Now this one, you would want to pick out even less of the areas that you picked out with the Scrag Brown, only the most raised areas. Final step, we're going to use Avaland Sunset, which is a bright yellow uh, as the final highlight. Now it's important to be a little bit careful here, as we don't want our chainmail to look yellowish or a golden chainmail. So make sure you don't have a lot of yellow on your brush when you do this, and you want to lightly drag your brush over only the most raised parts of the chainmail. Next, we're going to move on to the gold areas of the model. Now, this includes parts of Aomer's helmet, his buckles on his armor, parts of the horse's reins, the sword, and the scabbard. This is also a non-metallic area, so make sure that you know in advance where the light would be reflecting on the model. Feel free to use the photos of my completed Aomer as a visual reference for determining the bright points. So start by base coating all the gold areas with Zandri dust. 
Once the base coat is dried, you'll want to give all the gold areas a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Once Agrax Earthshade has dried, you want to begin highlighting. Now, I mixed in some white into my Xandri dust. It's about 75% Xandri dust and 25% white. For this first highlight, you want to leave roughly half of the gold areas the previous Xandri dust color. Make sure your paint is thin so that the blending is as seamless as possible. Here I've used a white airbrush paint as it's a little thinner than regular white paint. Once this is done, I did a 50-50 layer of Xandri dust and white mix. After you've applied the 50-50 highlight, you want to apply a 25% Xandri dust and 75% pure white. And once this is done, you want to use the pure white and make your final highlights. Make sure to use the white conservatively as you don't want to remove the color that you've built up to this point. When you're painting the armor Dumbo Brown, make sure to also paint the throwing spear, the leather part of the scabbard, and the horse's armor. Now for these ones, I used a simpler highlight method. I simply edge highlighted these areas with Tuscor fur which kind of looks like a brighter version of Doombo Brown. Alternatively, you can mix a little bit of white or Wraithbone in with Doombo Brown and make the same highlight you know, have a similar effect. Uh, I started painting the horse's uh, leather armor, which I used flat brown from Vallejo. Alternatively, you can use the Scorch Brown or Rhinox Hide from Games Workshop. And uh, basically I painted all the other brown areas on the model with, with this brown, which included the satchel on Aomer's side and the straps to his boots and his shield. After all the brown is complete, give all the brown areas a Agrax Earth Shade wash. Once the brown areas are done, then we move on to finish the shield. For this, I used Wog Flesh as the base coat, and then followed by an Athonian Camo Shade, and followed by highlights of Lauren Forest, and a final highlight of a 50-50 mix of Lauren Forest and White. Now on the shield, make sure to leave the brown crevices showing to show that it is a natural looking wooden shield. In addition to the shield, the other green part on the model is the cloth on the horse beneath the saddle. I painted this green area in the same way with the same paints. We move on to highlight the rest of the brown armor that we just painted. I used a little bit of wraithbone mixed in with my brown, about a 75% brown, 25% wraithbone. Any other bone color or white would also work with this mix. Essentially you just want to brighten the brown a little bit. If you have the Games Workshop Gorthor Brown, that would also work as well. Make sure to also highlight the back of the shield. Finally, what we're going to paint the painted design on the shield. We'll start with a Dawnstone Gray, followed by White. Now that most of the model is complete, we'll go back and finish the horse. Now you might notice that while you're painting Aomer, some of the paint have gotten on the horse, so this is a good time to paint the horse last and correct any mistakes that have, might have gotten on the horse. Here I've taken some Eschen Grey and I've basically painted all the areas that the light from the lamp is currently reflecting off of. And I've painted and dotted in small strokes from left to right. And you're essentially sketching out the areas where the light on your lamp is reflecting on the horse. And next I've used Dawnstone Grey so I've picked out the brightest spots out of the areas I've highlighted Eschen Grey. Now you see that the top of Aomer's horse has some sort of like freckle dots and essentially that is just applying a tiny bit of pure white on the tip of your brush and dotting the top of the horse's neck gently with the tip of your brush. Next we're going to take some Corvus Black and we're going to paint the horse's hair mane and Aylmer's gloves, boots, and inner shirt, followed by a wash of Nuln Oil on all these areas. While this is waiting to dry, we're going to highlight the straps and the belt on Aylmer with Mephiston Red. 
Highlighting the straps with Mephisto in red makes it stand out from the armor so that they, they aren't blended together when you look at the model. Next we're going to paint the horse's hooves with pure black. Now here I've used the Vallejo black from the model air range, but any sort of black paint would work. Now we're going to paint the tail, the mane, and Aomer's gloves and boots. I'm highlighting with Eschen Grey, followed by Dawnstone Grey. Now we're going to paint the hair on the model. So I gave the hair a Zandri Dust base coat, followed by Flayed One Flesh highlight, and followed by white. The final part on this model to be painted is the plume on Aomer's helmet. I gave it a base coat of Zandri dust, followed by a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Then I highlighted the top half of the plume with Flayed One Flesh. And to create some contrast, I dry brushed some Corvus Black at the bottom corner of the plume. For the final step, I did an edge highlight of white on the very top of the plume. And that's it. The model is now complete. Alright, this has been the painting guide for Aomer, Marshal of the Rittermark. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. And also let me know what models you would like to see a tutorial for.